It's time for some more printed circuit board um, transparency tests, and that's because I've found a new type of material. So let's get the bit of laminate. Here's the photosensitive laminate. I'm going to peel it, and I've made up three transparencies. So I'm going to place uh, them like this. I'm going to put uh, this is um, done with pigment ink. This one's done with dye ink on the new material. And there's not a lot of space left, but I'm just going to squeeze something in there uh, because I discovered another material called um, uh, vellum. It's, it's basically a tracing paper, but designed for ink jets. I'm not 100% sure if it is designed for ink jets, but it, it certainly took the ink, so I'm guessing that it may well actually be inkjet vellum after all. It's quite curly. So I'm just going to sit it at the end. I'm not too bothered about it not actually getting a full coverage here. I'll lift these up and... Uh, Get the glass up a wee bit further, like this. Okay, that's holding everything down nice and flat. And I'll move that up to about here. And I shall move the ultraviolet unit over it. Again, I'm just using the um, commercial nail varnishy type curing ultraviolet unit because it's an interesting option. It's it's something that's more available to people than the full blown ultraviolet exposure units. Now, the transparencies. You might recall that before I used a uh, pretty much generic um, overhead projector transparency film and I tried the various inks on it and it was okay, it worked quite well, particularly with the pigment ink. But I've now found that there is a specific film for the t-shirt industry and see if you can spot the difference here if I hold them side by side. You'll notice that this one is much more translucent. It almost looks pearlescentish, like it's more sort of opal coloured. And the reason for that is that it's it's not trying to be an overhead projector film, it's not trying to allow the light uh, through for for overhead projection. It is actually got uh, for making transparencies for the t-shirt industry because the t-shirt and screen printing industry uses the uh, inkjet transparencies uh, as well as the printed circuit board industry. So they've got this specific material aimed at the, the screen printing industry and that's what I'm using here. And I have to say, so far, just looking at it, it's very obvious that the reason for the translucency as opposed to the clarity of this one is that it's got a lot more of the emulsion or the coating that's going to take the ink in. And it's taken a lot of ink in. Both pigment and the dye ink, they both look very good. I tried the vellum with, um, I really smudged this, it takes ages to dry. I tried it with the pigment ink, and the pigment ink spread a little more on the surface, but the dye ink seemed to go into the, the vellum quite well. So they're both uh, interesting things. However, so far, well, we'll find out when I etch these. So far, this new, this well, it's not new. I think it's been about for a while. I just didn't know about it. This... Uh, screen printing transparency film, the inkjet. If you do a search for inkjet screen print, you'll find this film online. It looks very interesting indeed. So this has just finished um, exposing, so I'm going to get the gloves on now. Well, the glove on one hand. And hopefully my developing solution will have some oomph left in it. So I'll move this out of the way. I just did that on its uh, normal time cycle. So put that down out of the way. Lift that up. Put the glass somewhere I can find it this time, maybe, because I lost the other bit. I'm not sure what it is. And so far, they're all looking very good. So I'm just going to turn this down so it doesn't get exposed to any more light. I'm going to bring in my solution here. And let's uh, develop it. This may take a bit longer this time because this solution has been sitting for a modest length of time. Now, the darkness of the transparency dictates how, how critical the exposure time is going to be. If you've got a super jet black transparency, it means that um, the ultraviolet passing through um, the difference between where there's no ink and there there is ink is going to be much more marked. It's going to be as more significant. And that means that uh, the, it's going to be less critical when you're developing it like this 
because the ink won't have been weakened. Now, I will say I'm losing a lot, even though I put that text side down, I'm losing a lot of the super fine detail here. I'm losing a lot of the detail. That's disappointing. This suggests that maybe I'm overexposing it. So I'm just going to wash that. Right, let's take a look and see. The detail's still there, but let's uh, try it and uh, we'll see what happens when I etch it. So far, pigment may be the winner again. Although I have to say the parchment, the vellum, looks as though it's putting in a fair performance here. Righto, time to etch it and I'll be back shortly. Okay, it's in the Sino GS system. And I've completely disregarded the instructions by attempting to just give it a wee blast in the microwave, completely forgetting that little pockets of the liquid would be stored under the clip. And it's crinkled the plastic a little bit. Oh, not to worry. It's fine. So um, I'll just keep uh, patting this like this to spread the solution backwards and forwards because you have to have movement over the circuit board all the time. But yeah, it looks as though it's all etching okay. So I'll be back shortly to see what happens. OK, I've finished etching it, and I have to say that I think I've been over-exposing this a little bit, so I'm going to try it again, and I'm only going to expose it for a minute. So I'm going to cut some more laminate, but so far, bizarrely, the vellum has really put in a good show for itself in producing the best detail. I used various sizes of text. I used lines, uh, 0.4 millimetre, 1 millimetre, 1 1.5 and 2 millimetre. Now, to be honest, when I'm making circuit boards, I would only ever tend to use lines at least 1 millimetre. The only time I use the 0.4 millimetre is just for outlines of the circuit board and, and graphics on, uh, like, for the screen print. So when I'm, I'm actually etching boards, the smallest would be 1 millimetre. And in, in this case, every single one has passed that test with good results. I mean, these are solid. There's no pitting at all. They're, they're very good. It's only where I've gone down to the 0.4 millimetre that it's caused the problem. So I'm going to bring my guillotine up. Guillotine is the way to cut printed circuit board material. And I'm going to slice a bit of the material off. I'll put that delicate side up. So much easier than using a jigsaw or a hacksaw or anything else. So this uh, fresh bit of material, I'm going to lay the transparencies on it again. This exact same transparencies. And I'm going to um, expose them for exactly one minute. Now, when you're actually making your own circuit boards, the exposure time is quite critical. There's a sort of sweet spot that, you know, usually uh, you'd expose a bit of board with a transparency on it and you'd have a wee sort of sliding shutter and you'd pull it down every, say, 10 seconds and then see which developed just absolutely perfectly. Um, by the Because each then it would have a series of stripes at different development times. But um, let's uh, just try this at the one minute uh, time and we'll see how it goes. So now I just need to find those little transparencies that I carelessly abandoned. There's one. So here's the die on the translucent thing. I'm also putting them uh, printed side down for the maximum definition. And then let's see, have I got the little vellum one? There it is. And we'll try this again, but for a much shorter time. So here's my piece of glass, here's my piece of glass. And here we go again. That'll do. So this time I'm going to bring the ultraviolet unit up. It's the one that's got the four tubes in it. I'm going to sit it over. Push the button. And then I'm going to actually time this. All right. So it'll be interesting the vellum works. Now the vellum did not really take the pigment ink too well. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. It's, it's not going to take too long because I'm only giving it a minute. But having said that, when you're trying to count a minute, a minute is a long time. Well, I should get the glove on for uh, the developer. The 
developing your solution back through it should last. That's another thing I like about the sodium metasilicate. Is that what I, I use sodium metasilicate? I think it is. Um, the no. Uh, oh God, what is the name of that? I think it is more, more sodium metasilicate. Um, I like the fact that it lasts for ages. It really you can uh, just. Um, oh, it's just coming up in a minute. You can just keep using it. It's not like the sodium hydroxide one. Turn this off. Let's see how that's done. And uh, I'll get a glove, stick it on, and we'll uh, develop this. Yeah, I've just checked. It's sodium metasilicate. So here's a rubber glove, because I don't want to submerge my fingers into any sort of noxious chemical. Lift the glass off. Knock off the transparent. Okay, a much lighter image. We'll see how this goes. It may actually be too short an exposure time, but we'll soon find out. In it goes. This could take a bit longer to develop just purely because the uh, exposure time was shorter so it's, it's less weakened the, um, the protective coating the circuit board laminate. You can see it's starting to have an effect. This may be old laminate as well which is uh, not a great thing because that does affect how long it uh, takes to develop as well how, or how critical, how sensitive it's going to be to ultraviolet too. can see it appearing. I hate it when it, it develops at one end but not the other and then you're like, oh, cause you, you just wonder when should I stop, so to speak. If you leave any of the um, photoresist coating on at all, it just doesn't etch there. It's uh, just a wee bit annoying because it can go really thin to the point that you can't see it um, but it's still it's enough to actually block the ferric chloride from making contact with the copper and etching it. So this is etching slowly with good detail I have to say. I used to actually manufacture a lot of circuit boards manually like this. Just very small specialist prototype, not prototype runs, actually small commercial runs. This particular laminate is a hybrid laminate, it's not um, fiberglass um, completely, it's got fiberglass coating on the front and back but it's actually a resin bonded paper in the middle and it means it has the strength and uh, resilience of holding the the copper on of fiberglass, but the softness for drilling of the uh, resin bonded paper. It's a lot cheaper as well. That looks pretty good. I'm going to rinse this off. Yeah, that's looking very good. If anything, I'd say that the uh, tracing paper one has actually just taken a wee bit longer to develop. It's maybe blocking more of the ultraviolet. So I'm going to uh, risk uh, trying to equalise them without hopefully not not over developing the other ones. You wouldn't really normally use multiple um, mediums like this. So I'm just going to stop very soon. Once, once I chicken out, which is kind of, well, to be honest, it takes a lot for me to chicken out, as you may have noticed. Usually I chicken out at the point that smoke and flames are emitted from stuff. That's looking okay, but I'm just going to give it a wee bit longer. Just to make sure it's all off, which it may not be, but we'll find out. It's at that stage that's thin, but it's, is it... You just don't know until you put it in the ferric chloride. Right, I'm going to pause now and... Uh, I'm
Right, okay, I started uh, etching that, but I've taken it back out and washed it because I'm going to put it back in the um, developing solution because there are areas. It's just not quite developed right up to the track, so I'm going to uh, continue. I'm going to develop it just for maybe a few seconds longer just to get that to start etching evenly all over. Okay, and back into the ferric chloride it goes, and it's looking a lot better. It's really etching evenly all over now, so that's better. That does suggest that the little ultraviolet unit, the nail varnish dryer, the optimum time may actually be one and a half minutes. Um, so that's uh, something I'll try next time. And uh, in the meantime, I'll keep um, moving this about, and then uh, I'll show you the results once it's finished. Oh dear. My earlier adventure with uh, attempting to heat this up very gently in the microwave and forgetting that the heat would concentrate in this area has resulted in a tiny little pinhole and now some ferric chloride is leaking. And while ferric chloride isn't a major hazard to get in your hands, I wouldn't recommend it, it's not considered toxic um, in the sense that if you put any in your mouth, and I've tried it just to see what it tasted like, it's acrid beyond belief. It's disgusting. It's really horrible. But the main peril of ferric chloride, uh, uh, one of the most common copper etchants, is it stains really, really permanently. It stains everything yellow and brown and all sorts of colours. And the, the colour just doesn't come out. Uh, so uh, definitely not something to use on your kitchen worktop. Unless you're a bachelor, in which case you can use anything you like in your kitchen worktop because there's nobody else to complain. But I shall continue with this... Uh, process of etching and uh, we'll see how it looks at the end. And the results are in. And it's a draw. They're all absolutely perfect. Even the smallest two millimeter high text www.bigclive.com is perfectly legible in them all. The 0.4 millimeter lines have all been produced absolutely fine and there's no real flaws. So um, yeah, that gives the option then of this um, film or, indeed, uh, in some printer inks, will work on the inkjet vellum. Some inks won't work in the inkjet vellum, but um, this is just another option. Um, but this one here, this comes out the printer virtually touch dry, that absorbs the ink in straight away. Oh, interesting note, if you use this um, screen printing inkjet transparency, and you want to find out which side to print on, just rub it between your fingers. One side is very squeaky, and that's the side you print on. The other side is slippery. So yeah, that's a good result. And definitely with the ultraviolet exposure unit, uh, adjusting the time to about a minute uh, is good, but probably about, I'd say, uh, in future, I'll just increase it a little bit longer than a minute. Um, because that's actually putting out quite a lot of ultraviolet light. Uh, it's actually got shorter exposure times than my full-on industrial unit. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good result.